You are more valuable than anything and everything. If you have not read Ayatul Kursi, today you are at a loss. If you have not read the three Quls or what we call the Mu'awwidatayn Surah Al-Ikhlas, you are at a loss. You need to read it every day, morning and evening, whether you like it or you don't like it. Because that is your steering lock. That is your lock. That is... That is the remote that will actually lock your vehicle. It will lock you. So shaitan doesn't come anywhere near. Not at all. Do you get my point? Allah says, protect yourself. I'm here to tell you that Allah has shown you how to protect yourself. The, you know, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam taught us these surahs given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after they were revealed, no one has an excuse. After they were revealed, no one has an excuse. You read your dua, seek the protection of Allah from shaitan, the accursed, from jealousy, from the night, from the darkness. That's what you're saying. Oh Allah, protect me from evil people, protect me from evil jinn kind, protect me from the darkness, protect me from those who blow into the knots and do magic, protect me from them, protect me from... You're repeating it thrice in the morning, thrice in the evening. That's Allah teaching you this. And if you don't do it and then something happens, who is to blame? Who do you blame? You didn't lock your vehicle. You didn't put the steering lock as they said. And your vehicle's gone, your steering is gone. Now what? Didn't we tell you? Yes, we did. Similarly, Muhammad sallallahu used to repeat some duas. More so for us to learn. Bismillah in the name of Allah. Alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi. In, in whose name or with whose name nothing can harm on the earth. Wala fis sama'i. No in the skies. No in the heavens. The skies basically. Sama. Wa huwa sami'ul alim. And he is all hearing, all knowing. That's Allah. Bismillah alladhi la yadurru ma'asmihi shay'un fil ardi. That's a dua. Do you know it? If you don't, learn it today. In the name of Allah, with whose name nothing can harm me. Nothing at all. Nothing in, on earth, nothing in the skies. He is all-knowing. This is Allah. Repeat that dua thrice a day. A'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tammati min sharri ma khalaq. I seek protection in Allah. All his words, everything. I seek protection in Allah and all his words from the evil that he has created. Oh Allah, protect me. That's also part of your creature or part of your creatures. Those are part of your creatures. Protect me from the evil. Protect me from the harm. You need to say these duas. This is when you will be protected. Inna waliyya Allah, alladhi nazzal al-kitab, wa huwa yatawalla salihin What a powerful verse of the Quran. You need to learn it. Indeed, my protector is Allah. Inna waliyya Allah. Indeed, my protector is Allah. You repeat that verse, those words. Allah will protect you. Imagine I'm repeating. Inna waliyya Allah. Alladhi nazzal al-kitab. The one who revealed the book, meaning the Quran. Wa huwa yatawalla salihin And he is the one who protects the pious and the good. I'm a decent guy. I hope that Allah loves me. And I pray that I am a good person. I ask Allah to protect me. Oh Allah, you are my my protector. Look at how powerful the words are. What are you saying? Inna waliyya Allah. My protector is Allah. You want to harm me? Try your luck. You know who's my protector? Allah. Wallahu a'lamu bi a'da'ikum wa kafa billahi waliyan wa kafa billahi nasira. What is the meaning of it? Wallahu a'lamu. Allah knows best who your enemies are. That's what the verse says. You don't even know your enemies. Sometimes they are close around you, near you. They have access to you. They're in a circle that you think is your circle. They're your enemies. Inna waliyya Allah. In fact, this verse I was saying, Wallahu a'lamu bi a'da'ikum. Allah knows best who your enemies are. Wa kafa billahi waliyan. Wa kafa billahi nasira. Sufficient is Allah as a protector. And sufficient is Allah as a helper. To whom? To me. That's the dua. That's a verse of the Quran. Is it not worth learning these verses? Something simple? Inshallah, we learn them. Hasbi Allah. Hasbi Allah. Allah is sufficient for me. That's what we're saying. 
Allah is sufficient for me. Hasbi Allah la ilaha illa huwa alayhi tawakkaltu wa huwa rabbul arsh al-azim. Allah is sufficient for me. There is none worthy of worship besides him. I lay my full trust on him. And he is the Lord of the great throne. That's the dua you are saying. Another dua. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for us and he is the best disposer of our affairs. That dua was actually said when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the companions were told that there is an army coming to attack you. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made this dua. The same dua was read when Ibrahim Alaihi Salam was thrown into the fire. When he was thrown into the fire, the fire became cold, meaning the fire became a means of his release. Do you know what the narration actually says? It says that Allah instructed the fire to be a means of peace for Ibrahim. Salam. So when he was thrown into the fire tied, the fire actually burnt the ropes and the shackles, but didn't touch him. So he was released. What was the dua he made as he's being thrown? He didn't quit his deen. He said, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for me. He is the best disposer of my affairs. He will take care of me. Say that dua. Repeat it on a daily basis. What I'm teaching you today, powerful gems, wallahi, to protect you. We always say, I need to be protected. We know we need to be protected. Don't think that it's easy to walk on the street and nothing's going to happen. Shayateen can tamper with you. When you are conscious of Allah, you're making dua, they won't tamper with you. In fact, another blessing is because of that consciousness of Allah, Allah will give you the energy to do the right thing at the right time. It's prayer time. Allah will give you the energy to look for a place where I can pray. How did that happen? Because I'm conscious of Allah. When I'm not conscious of Allah, I don't care. Fajr came and went, I didn't realize. Dhuhr came and went, I didn't realize. Asr came and went. Maghrib came and went. Isha came and went. And it's the following morning. The only thing I did was to eat. That's it. And perhaps sleep. May Allah forgive us. May Allah forgive us. We are believers. We are going through struggles. The Ummah is bleeding. Gaza is bleeding. Palestine is bleeding. It's wrong for us not to mention it. May Allah grant them ease, victory, goodness. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them. While the Ummah is bleeding, what am I going to invest? What am I going to invest in order to be able to protect myself? What am I going to do in order to be able to protect myself? I need to make sure I'm connected with Allah, my brothers, my sisters. Wallahi, if you're connected with Allah, nobody can harm you. No one can touch you. Look at Isa alayhi salam. Jesus may peace be upon him. What happened to him? Prophet of Allah, one of the five top prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Isa alayhi salam. Did Allah allow him to be harmed? No. No. So what happened? Allah took him away before he was harmed. So Allah says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ Allahu Akbar. Neither did they kill him, nor did they crucify him, but they were confused. They were confused. Someone else was crucified, having been made into the likeness of Jesus, may peace be upon him. That's what the Quran says. He was not crucified. He was not killed. So what happened to him? Allah didn't allow that to happen. Allah took him up alive. And he's going to come back inshallah. So if someone says, Isa, Jesus is alive. Say, yes, he is. Oh, but you're a Muslim. No, but he's alive. Yeah. Oh, but you're a Muslim. Say, yes. Yes. He was not harmed. He was not killed. He was not crucified. Allah... The creator of creation took him up alive. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. May Allah grant us an understanding. 
This is the protection of Allah. This is why I say, you want the protection of Allah. There are verses of the Quran, Ayatul Kursi, like I said, and a few of the other verses, they are called Al Mu'awwidat. You know, Al Mu'awwidatan, it means the two surahs, if you were to read them, they will actually help you to be protected from Allah, meaning by Allah from Shaitan. Allah will protect you. And we don't read those surahs. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقِ وَمِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدْ Protection from jealousy, protection from black magic, protection from the darkness, from the evil that happens in the dark. You know, in the dark, a lot of evils happen. I, you know, when I was little, I used to wonder, why do they call it a nightclub? Why do they call it a nightclub? They don't call it a day club, afternoon club, morning club. No. Because it's only at that time when Rasulullah says, after Isha, if you don't have anything constructive to do, go to bed. That's the time shaitan comes out in the dark. So we say, oh Allah, protect me from the evil of the darkness. When it's dark, you need to save me from this darkness. A nightclub, nightclub. If you, can re if you can go to bed at night, inshallah, there's no morning club, there's no afternoon club, nothing else. May Allah grant us goodness. But we don't read those surahs, we don't know the meaning of it, and those are the short, beautiful surahs. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas, malikin nas, ilahin nas. Oh Allah, the, the, the creator of mankind, the king or the owner of mankind, and subhanallah, the lord of mankind, protect us from the evil of the same mankind. And protect us from the evil of jinn kind and mankind. Protect us from the waswas that happens. The devil that causes the evil thoughts within the hearts of man. Someone sees you, wallahi, they see you in a good condition, smelling good. They are burning because the scent is a little bit too sweet for them to afford. Doesn't it happen? Doesn't it happen? They see you roll up in your Lamborghini. Mashallah, Urus. What do they call it? And instead of anything, they just look at you and they are burning within. They can't stomach it. Why? Why? That's waswas il khannas. Even worse, it's hasad on one hand and on the other hand, it's shaitan going round in your heart. Your heart is not protected, my brother. Don't stretch your eyes to look at what Allah has given other people because it's not going to benefit you in any way. You're going to burn. And that burning, imagine they call it burning. You know why? It literally is burning. They could have used a better word for that, right? They say, brother, stop burning. Don't they? Well, mind you, it could even be a sister. Stop burning. Why is why burning? There was no fire there because it's inside. It eats you up. It already shows you such a negative word. If it was a good thing, they would have said, wow, stop cooling. You know, there's nothing like that. It's not cool at all. There's no coolness in it. Coolness is when you say, mashallah, alhamdulillah, brother, I'm so happy for you. May Allah bless you with more. And the angels are saying, may Allah bless you with more too, because you made a dua for your brother. You made a dua for someone else. So we're going to make that dua for you. Don't you want that? That is now cool, calm. I'm happy. I'm happy for you. Are you really happy for others when they're doing better than you? If you are, you're a winner. The minute you're jealous because others are doing better than you, you need help. Because it's going to take you over. Inna al-hasada ya'kulul hasanat kama ta'kulul narul hatab. The hadith says, jealousy eats away at the good deeds similar to the fire when it eats away a dry log. If jealousy eats your good deeds, imagine what it does to you as a person. I always think of it. I say, why did the hadith say, Ya'kulul hasanat? What about you, your body? If it's eating your good deeds, your body is finished. You're, gonna die. You're not going to sleep at night. Why? Because today, oh, that guy. We were playing together yesterday. I had more money than him. Suddenly, look at him. He's got much more than me. He's become this and he's that. He's, you can't sleep at night. What happened? Your deeds were eaten, number one. But number two is your brain is also being eaten. Your system is also being eaten. It's not good enough. Protect yourself. Read these surahs in, so that two things will happen. Neither will people harm you with all that evil, nor would you ever harm someone else with the evil that shaitan, again I say, it's a blessing to have someone to blame. Shaitan. You tell someone, what happened? What does he say? I said it earlier. Wallahi, Shaitan. Yusuf alayhi salam, his brothers plotted against him for years. And what did they do? They wanted to drop him. They put him into the well. They don't know what happened thereafter. Some time later, literally decades later, 
They entered this place. He recognized them. He did whatever he did. One day when they came back and he questioned them. And what did he say? He said, I am Yusuf. This is my brother. You, whatever you guys did was wrong, man. He just said, I'm Yusuf. This is my brother. Allah has favored us. Look at this. When someone plans your downfall, perhaps that is the path of your success. Perhaps that is the exact door through which you are going to get success. So take it in your stride. Don't worry. You did your dua. You're close to Allah. You have sabr and taqwa. You are thanking Allah for what he's blessed you. You cannot go wrong. Negatives don't happen to a believer. A believer is only in a positive situation. If goodness comes in his direction, he's thankful to Allah and humble. And if something negative does come in the direction of a believer before he actually suffers negative consequences because he bears sweet beautiful patience allah converts it into an act of reward that deserves an unlimited recompense unlimited that's allah sabr you made sabr you had a problem yes sabr how long is the sabr a month, two months, a year, two years, 10 years, 20 years. Yusuf alayhi salam, 30 years, 40 years. One day he said, my brothers, guess what? Allah favored me over you. Allah has raised, raised me above you. Straight. What was their whole plan? Let's drop him below us. Did they succeed? In fact, that was the plan Allah used to raise them, to raise him above them. Subhanallah. And then he says, Bring my father along. The father comes. And when they see the father, everyone's excited. And you know, the interpretation of the initial dream of the sun and the moon and the 11 stars. And here is Yusuf alayhi salam. And he's saying, oh Allah, you have blessed me with kingdom. You have blessed me with so much. Did he blame his brothers? No, he didn't. Guess what he says? وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي إِذْ أَخْرَجَنِي مِنَ السِّجْنِ وَجَاءَ بِكُمْ مِنَ الْبَدُ مِنْ بَعْدِ أَنْ نَزَغَ الشَّيْطَانُ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ إِخْوَتِي He's mentioning the favor of Allah upon him and his brothers and he's telling his brothers as well that Allah has favored me. Subhanallah. In what way? Allah has done good to me. Allah was so kind to me. That's what Yusuf is saying. To whom? To his brothers, to his father, to those who were around. Qad ahsana bi. Allah favored me when he took me out of the prison. Notice he didn't concentrate on going into the prison. He's concentrating on how he came out of the prison. That was more important. You know, when you suffer a loss and suddenly you come out of it you thank allah oh allah i thank you for helping me out of my problem you don't ever sit and say oh i had a problem you know one day i fell you know one day i fell if you're going to keep doing that you're going to be depressed don't look at those negatives they're gone you bore sabr it was not a negative that sabr was an act of worship that sabr is an act of worship only given to those who are believers who believe in allah you notice sabr is an act of worship given as a gift by Allah to those who believe. If Allah has given you an opportunity to bear sabr, it's only because he loves you and you're a believer. That's why. If you've had that opportunity and you bore the sabr, good news to you. So he says, well, Allah favored me when he took me out of the prison. And, and he, he brought all of you from the desert. He brought you all here after shaitan had spoiled the relationship between us who spoiled the relationship who was it shaitan i see birmingham is a bit rattled who spoiled the relationship shaitan how beautiful a man this was he tells his brothers look you guys almost killed me no problem it was shaitan we are still brothers we love each other it's okay come 
I'll, I'll, I'll deal with you guys, I'll help you guys, I'll do whatever I have to. You get what you want, don't worry, I'm here today, relax. Whatever happened, happened, it's over. Do you know why it was over? Let me quickly give you one reason, but there are so many. One reason is, he realized very quickly as a believer and a prophet of Allah, that that was part of the plan of Allah. Had it not been for the initial throwing into the well, he, there wouldn't have been the ending the way it was. So he says, it's okay, whatever happened was part of the plan of Allah. But instead of waiting for the day of judgment, you know what we would say in our communities here? And I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. Your brother would come crying to ask forgiveness from you after years, even a year, two years. He say, no, on the day of Qiyamah, I'm going to fix you. Am I right or wrong? We wait for Qiyamah. I'm not, I don't want to talk about it. It's okay. You've done a lot. Let's wait. Allah will be the judge. We wait for the day of judgment. How many times have we heard that say, being said? Haven't we? Sometimes we say it. We say, no, I'm going to wait for the, I want my right and I'm going to catch you on the day of judgment. I've heard people say this. I'm going to catch you on the day of judgment. Hey, when you get to the day of judgment, you might not know who's right and who's wrong. It might just be the other way around. You say, no, it can't be. It might just be. Don't leave it for that day. It's better for you to say, you know what? You really are remorseful. You really are sorry. No problem. It's okay. I will forgive, but I won't forget. I will forgive, but I won't forget. Why won't I forget? I won't forget because I need to remember what you did to me so that I'm not bitten from the same source two times because a believer is never bitten twice from the same source. However, there comes a stage in the life of a human being when Allah makes you forget it. Sometimes things have happened 20 years ago, you've forgotten it. You didn't want to forget it. Allah made you forget it. So that's a blessing. So Yusuf alayhi salam concentrated on the positive. With us, wallahi, we would tell people, I'm going to fix you, I'm holding it against you, I'm this. Let's try and do away with that. We don't need to interact too much with someone we've forgiven if we fear that perhaps it might be repeated. I can tell you, listen brother, I forgive you, but that's okay. I don't need to have much dealing with the same brother again. Not that I haven't forgiven, but it's just me, I'm a human. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness. These are a few words of motivation I thought perhaps I'd share with you. The main point I want to quickly repeat is my brothers and sisters, you and I need to be protected. And just like we would protect our valuables and everything else, more important than all of that is to protect ourselves. In order to protect ourselves, Allah has given us a gift. He's given us Ayatul Kursi. He's given us these last few surahs of the Quran, some beautiful verses. I just mentioned a few in, in the Quran. Wallahi, read these verses, repeat them, listen to this, one more, one more. Can I say one more? Rabbi a'udhu bika min hamazati shayatini wa a'udhu bika rabbi ayyahdurun. What a beautiful verse. Oh my Lord, I seek your protection from the whispers of the devil and I seek your protection from the devil even coming into my presence. How powerful is that dua? Oh Allah, protect me from the whispers of shaitan and protect me from shaitan even coming into my presence. So when I'm walking, shaitan is heading in the other direction. That's what was happening with Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an. The hadith says if he walked down a gully, shaitan would walk down another gully. He knows that's Umar. He'd know what, what my tricks are. Today we walk down a gully with the shayateen. Astaghfirullah, may Allah protect us. May Allah grant us ease. Rabbi a'udhu bika min hamazati shayateen wa a'udhu bika rabbi ayyahdurun. May Allah grant us the ability to memorize some of these and to constantly call out with these duas. May Allah protect all of us and may Allah Almighty never make us the source of another person's pain. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad.